All right, welcome to the first episode of Talking Nonsense. I'm Brian Clough, joined here by Frank Zimmerman, or Hello. also known as Zimmy. We are fired up to finally get, begin the podcast. Make sure to subscribe and like us on Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Tunes, and Stitcher. And we'd love to hear your feedback, as obviously... This is our first podcast, and we're totally new to this, so we want to get a little criticism, what we could do a little better, like adjust this, and... Even a medium thumb would actually be good. Yeah, yeah, you know, (laughs) most of them are going to be a little bit down. Pretty much. But, uh, yeah, give us some suggestions. Uh, We're going to have some fun with this this podcast, and we're just going to go balls to the wall, have some fun with it, and... uh, the more feedback you give us is going to help us to grow the show. So obviously, you guys probably recognize Frank from VH1, the Tough Love series. Uh, it was tough. Let it me tell was you tough. Brian. And we'll go into uh, the four years that followed that Tough Love. <laughs> Anyways, but that's going to be the in love a few... kept on getting tougher. Oh, okay. Me. Tougher for you, but funnier for me. <laughs> I know. But we'll get into we got to We're going to go behind the scenes on the whole Tough Love show uh, in... A couple of future episodes, so we're going to have a lot of fun with that. Uh, just wanted to check into things. Uh, a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world right now. The whole coronavirus. How, how are you dealing with everything, Frank? Wow, the coronavirus. Uh, basically, uh, being that the mask actually uh, masks a lot of me, and the fact that uh, I don't have to buy girls dinner. Amazing. Actually, my daily life is better than it's ever been. Well, yeah, when you say that, clearly across the country, there's been a lot of domestic uh, disp- uh, abuses way up, murders, uh, <laughs> <laughs> spousal fighting, and a lot of breakups and everything. So there's a lot. So of- I've got a theory on that. I think that women just talk too much. <laughs> they do. They do. You know, uh, men are a- talking. Uh, I know. Women love that on the first day. Well, when we were originally had the third co-host, a woman, and. She talked too much. We had to like. She did. It really did. I mean. Yeah, she's in the dumpster. <laughs> totally. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, like you said, that's a positive thing. New people are going into new dating things. I think it's going to help me out. And if I ever decide to start dating again, uh, I would mask will, recommend it. That mask will cover at least sixty percent of this ugly mug. <laughs> and uh, I'm working on a new mask that'll go over my eyes, and I could just put out a little couple holes. And uh, how could I go wrong? Just stay home and VR it, and just jack it. <laughs> uh, I think uh, we've all been staying home and jacking it. Yeah. It's uh, well, not so much as a virtual reality jack. It's just a reality jack. We're like, oh, I hate my life. I hate my life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wow, you ooh, are oh. in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't say that? How do you think relationships are going to go with this whole new COVID thing going down? Oh, man. I mean, uh, nobody wants to be next to each other. I clearly don't want to be this close to you. It's like basically even people <laughs> that start dating are like in a marriage all of a sudden. Like, I don't want to touch you. Yeah. I'm not putting your tongue in my mouth. Yeah, everybody's like, uh, what the hell? Is, I mean, you can't touch each, anybody. Uh, oh, and you got you're MC a... Hammer. Can't touch this. Doo, doo, doo. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. then you got parachute pants like that you just got out of your like 80s prom. <laughs> do you ever have those? Uh, I did not. Although I did jam at it. Yeah, you did. Did you do the I did take walk? two virginities uh, to boys to men. Boys the men, Wait, boys, boy, the Virginia boys was the first one, then the men yeah. was the second one. <laughs> oh yeah, I bust a lot of cherries. <laughs> I, I, I bet. Actually, uh, so this is sad, and thank God I've and had your, a couple your drinks. You can't touch this, and you do a moonwalk backwards. <laughs> no, and then go. Oh no, you can touch this. <laughs> no, you always tell the girl she can't touch it, so therefore she wants to touch it. Like obviously, oh, well, reverse like, psychology. Yeah, of course. All right, dude. Just like women in general are reverse psychology. And by the way, I do have a funny story. Believe it or not, I did my first concert I ever went to in college in Chicago. Went to DePaul, and uh, Boys of Men was playing, right? So me and my roommate were Boys of Men uh, like uh, fans, and then all of a sudden, like uh, four big missed things like come up, like uh, where they're coming past us, and and they are uh, as wide as they are width. 
Uh, we'll call him Girthy. Yeah, let's say that. Girthy McGee. Let's say that. So, and I saw the biggest one. They look like Wheezy from the Jeffersons Whoa. on an ED bench. Like, she uh, hung out with uh, our buddy Mike at Golden Corral way too long. But uh, anyway, she's like, uh, oh, excuse me, excuse me. I'm like, I know my luck. I know my luck. And she sits right next to me. So, they, they have actually the, the armrest, right? And her ass actually stops at the armrest. <laughs> and then to get her ass in... She actually pulled, and I'm not making this up, into the armrest. So I've got half of a booty and then a titty, like the entire concert, where I'm just like, just skinny mini now, right? I mean, obviously in my wow. skinny days. How, how days. many years ago was this? Yeah, I mean, clearly wow. this was not 2012 <laughs> to 2000 present. <laughs> it, it was a lot of years ago. but All right. Uh, but anyway, I remember, and then like uh, when they came up with the ooh ah, and they came out in their white suits and stuff like that, they actually for her to like jump up, she had to push on the armrest several times, get a titty <laughs> off my lap. So here I am with a semi. I'm in college, black big titty on my lap. I'm like, ooh, this is nice. Like you hey, really, you we'll got a semi from that? Yeah, uh, oh, I have a boy. sitting boner. All right. Well, luckily this isn't on video or anything, so nobody's gonna <sighs> judge you on that. Yeah, I'm sure that there's. No, I mean, no. any judging whatsoever no, you're totally in this fine. entire totally abortion that we're totally doing fine. right now. I think I sit, sat next to that same girl on an airplane multiple times. Sat next to her or on her? Uh, she's more on me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I was pinned in next to that girl. I believe that multiple times. And you lived to tell the tale, so God bless you. Well, yeah, I did not. <laughs> I would, if only I could have had a semi. <laughs> <laughs> you had the zimmy semi. Uh, in, in college days, you always have a semi. Like, oh, is that wind out of the southwest? Ooh, oh my god! I got a boater. <laughs> Masturbation was a, a sport back then. Oh, daily, uh, hourly event, really. Oh, totally, totally. <laughs> Especially when you had to like spend. Everybody had to have a roommate, like uh, right across the way. You try to like rub one out. Without the other one knowing, but like, oh, he's yeah. totally asleep. We went to a cake party. I think he had like three shots of tequila and a case of beer. Yeah. And then you just start going at him. And he gets up to go to the bathroom. You're like, fuck, you're back. <laughs> but you got whiskey dick and he can't come whatsoever. <laughs> and it's like basically when my roommate, and you're right, like my roommate in college, when he started doing the, uh, the cricket legs, I'm like, Oh, stop masking it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's playing a fucking uh, tune. Jeez. Oh. But nothing was worth it. I'm probably one or two years older than you. Yeah, 17, ladies and gentlemen. 17. But going back home after you know college and trying to you know rub one out in, in private. Then you get home, you're like, ooh, look at this. I got a spare bedroom. You, you turn on the Cinemax that's been disconnected, and all you get is this big purple wave going through. You probably never experienced this. You're a little bit younger. Yeah. Now. Everybody little, uh, again, 17 years since previously. Seen everybody who's rubbing one out in the 80s knows what I'm talking. You try to put it on like Lady Chatter to these lovers or something like that, and all of a sudden you got this purple wave going through. You can see like one boob over here and like a vagina on the other side. You're like, I could go with that. <laughs> you know, I was like seven in the 80s. Like you make the 80s sound like it was just like a oh, shit. The, hell of the, time. the whole populace is just walking around masturbating. But apparently. this was before freaking. Uh, Cable TV and everything like really kicked oh, in. Oh, VHS? There was no direct TV. Oh, what were you on? Microfish? Like, <laughs> ooh, only, I saw a titty. Only at the library <laughs> until I got kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and ironically, you were being uh, kicked out being loud, not masturbating. Right. Masturbating was actually encouraged. Yeah. Loud, it's cool. Oh, look at the tits on that bitch. And the best thing, <laughs> uh, best thing was uh, I was always on in detention at the time at fucking... So Ooh, they, nothing like a teacher with discipline. Uh, I've been bad. Yeah. Very bad. Mr. Bradley was horrible. <laughs> Boy, he used to spank us. I'm but, sure he did. <laughs> <laughs> Sideways. In my town, they used to have a, 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 a small town in Connecticut, and you'd have like the regular public school, and, uh, and then you'd have the Catholic school. And you'd talk to all the Catholic kids, and... They used to beat the fuck out of them with like rulers. <laughs> 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 and we'd be. <laughs> Did you get a boner every time? 
Was it by nuns? I, yeah. Were they wearing thigh-high boots? I tried I to do it. I saw a porn like that. I actually tried to do an internship in fifth grade over there just to get the <laughs> yeah. little fun over there. But that's a story for another time. Actually, the small town that you describe, I really like envisioned the town that you grew up in. It's like the town from Blazing Saddles. That's for sure. God bless those dollars you had for your chicken nuggets. Speaking of dollars for the chicken nuggets, if, uh, I've been out of the dating scene for a little bit. I'm very jealous. Well, it's, I haven't been on any dates or anything, but... No, I, again, I'm very jealous. Let, let's just say, uh, what's the best way... Let's say I'm going to go on a date. I should probably go Don't buy, recommend it. I should continue. probably go uh, buy a nice bottle of wine, steak dinner... Maybe some shrimp cocktail. Hmm. Really impress this girl that I just met three hours ago. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm glad you asked that, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I have a theory, and it's called uh, CPL. It, it's uh, cost. Connecticut per Power and Light. Lay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Miller Light. Uh, what is what, what's it called? Cost per lay. Oh. It's a mathematical equation, so you wouldn't get it. You're not Asian. <laughs> Anywho, basically, a couple more of these any beers girls, a <laughs> <laughs> bunch of ninjas are going to come by and just kill you. But they'll be able to add up the poundage. Anyway, uh, it's called cost per lay. And uh, basically, it's a mathematical equation that you have to, the, the money that you spend on her. So I'm thinking more like happy hour, half price apps, half price drinks. So you can like jam down tents, so you have whiskey dicks so that. Your dick is like Caesar, and it just pulsates, and you can't come to save your life. Whiskey dick is the best thing in the world. Now, you, where I come from, whiskey dick's a different thing, where it's kind of not the best thing in the world, and a guy kind of makes a few excuses, like, oh, this never happens. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. That vent you, is blowing right on me. What do you mean by that? Whiskey dick in the Northeast is, if you drank too much, and you can't get a boner at all, and it... When it comes time to maybe have some little sexy time with the girls, Borat would say, nothing's happening. And you got to make some excuses. Really? You're like pushing straight? Oh, that's never happened to you. Dude, whiskey dick is that you drink a shitload. Your cock actually pulsates where you're like, which I always, every time I'm going to like nail a chick on the first Pulsates date. Pulsates like uh, right after, like when like the sun goes heartbeat. down and you see Venus going like this? No, my like heartbeat, right? Like as my heart beats, my cock actually throbs and she can be an acrobat on it and just like do gymnastics and shit like that. And no matter what she does, no matter how hot she is, no matter the sexy outfit, I can't come to save my life, which is obviously very frustrating for me. It's like wearing 16 cock rings. <laughs> and anyway. Kind of like 16 candles, right? Yeah. Uh, cock rings? Uh, I never got a boner on Molly Ringwald. Although, what kind of whiskey? Although are... Jake on his Porsche, I didn't masturbate to that. <laughs> <laughs> Pull forward a little bit. You're hanging on that green screen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but uh, it's what kind of a whiskey? Do you? you must have some like... Uh, pretty good whiskey going on like Woodford I, and I'm with the Jim Beam no I, <laughs> no I'm 100% Jim Beam I don't no I don't want my dick to be like all I have a British accent and shitty teeth like fuck oh. that oh like I don't want to be <laughs> yeah you don't want it to match your date no fucking Jim Beam Jack whatever uh wild turkey wild turkey oh I uh that's the first night I uh, had sex with a girl in her butt <laughs> That's a true story. Oh, and let me tell you this. Seeing story. that the girl's name Bobby Joe, we're not too sure it was a girl. It was actually a uh, mullet doesn't count as freaking actually a girl's hairdo. Yeah, actually, wasn't that you and you had long hair like Bon John? All right, let's not talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Let's <laughs> not uh, talk about while, that. Well, but seriously, whiskey dick is like, in fact, uh, me and one of my other friends that's like older like you, they're like, Oh, whiskey dick is like pushing string through like a mouse trap. But uh, anyway, I'm like, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy like uh, or rent a, uh, a one of those like uh, band buses and like uh, like Trump is great, but I'll put like the new whiskey dick and I'm gonna like go to every town and educate people 
about wi- what whiskey dick really we'll is. We'll start off in the Northeast. Really there's something going on up there. Oh, well, apparently. A something bunch of, in the water. A bunch of pe- people have Samuel Adams and can't get it up. So, yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> have you ever know your at, audience. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever look at the fucking face on that can? Of course Shit. you can't get it up. The new whiskey dick is yeah. what I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it the new whiskey dick. They should have I'm like going to educate people. Sandy Adams with a hot chick on the can. It is so frustrating, dude. I would rather actually not be able to get it up than just throb nonstop while she just rides and rides and sucks and all the other stuff. Actually, a few of your girlfriends mentally, have actually I've already said that came too. in. What? Actually, a few of your ex girlfriends have told you. I wish Simi actually did not get it up. Until <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is true. Because they're like. Um, we started uh, screwing at three o'clock. It's now seven, and I'm like raw. Uh, oh yeah. Anyway, uh, the new whiskey dick. The Just new whiskey that. dick. All right. It was a pleasure having you guys. And uh, our next episode, we're gonna go into the old whiskey dick. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. But, uh, uh, mostly Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give you some stories. Uh, bring your tissues. It's gonna be a lot of tears from me, mostly. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, the tissues aren't going to be for me. I'm not going to come. Oh, obviously. Well, in in closing, I I wanted to. We were trying to fire up this podcast a little bit earlier, and I'll tell you just one quick little story that. It starts off a little sad, but it doesn't end too sad. It's, <laughs> it ends sad. So I, <laughs> we were supposed to shoot this on Thursday night. The uh, my. My cat got a little uh, over the edge, uh, 19 year old, years old, and was in bad shape, so I decided to bring in a vet to put her down on Friday morning. So long story short, we put her down, and the vet had the cat on top of my legs, and it took about 25, 30 minutes, and I'm starting to get emotional and everything, uh, sniffling, and I got that stupid mask on, so I'm... I'm Loading up on the booger session going on on the thing. Snot bubbles. Snot bubbles are going. I'm kind of like a whimpering a little bit, but it's more of just the big bubbles coming up underneath the mask, and I'm like, oh god. So I finally get up, and the vet goes, and she's this young girl, very nice, friendly, and uh, vivacious, and everything, and uh. So I, she goes, do you want a tissue? I'm like, oh, no, no, I got one right over here. And I take like two steps behind her and grab my tissue box. And I, I'm like, oh, God, I got to get rid of all these freaking snots. So I go to blow my nose. I'm like, I blow it as hard as I have because I got extra boogers up there and everything. And as I'm blowing, I blow out the biggest fart I've laid in my life at the same exact time <laughs> at the same exact place. And, uh, and, and the place, there's no TV on. It's tile floor. <laughs> Walls, the air echoes, conditioning wasn't even air on. conditioning was not on. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're in Florida right now, so you know, January, we have to put the air conditioner on sometime. Lucky us. So I'm like, oh no, she totally heard that. It is the most awkward time. I got like a tear coming down my eye. And so I grab a couple other tissues, and I blow out two more big fucking snorts and, uh, just to try to cover up the first one because I don't know if the timing was exactly perfect with the, with the sneeze and the, and the blowing of the nose or not. But it was an awkward moment. (laughs) Anyways, we'll leave it at that. We're looking forward to seeing you guys next week. You guys have a great time. And what we're going to do now is hopefully you can cheer us. God bless and uh, stay safe. We'll let Zimmy lead this one. For sure. Go ahead, give it the old. From the window to to the the wall. wall. Cheers, folks.